And now let's add sort of a bony material to some parts of the body. So come back to the body here. And let's say that we want to, in certain parts of the body, like these raised areas, we want to actually add a completely different kind of material look. Like let's say we have these bony protrusions that sort of come out of the skin and we want to add those in. So what, one of the things that we can do is add a material that exists within Substance Painter. Painter provides a lot of different materials here. And then also in the smart materials, there are a lot of materials here that you can use. And you can scroll through and see all of those different kinds of effects that you can really easily get. So if you're first starting out with Painter, it's a great way to come in and start to kind of dissect some of the different materials and how they're working, how the different masks work and things like that. So let's go ahead and add this bone stylized material. And I'm just gonna drop it to the top of our layer stack here on our body temp. And so go ahead and drag this up all the way up to the top. And so now you can see that the bone is actually using the, the depth, the curvature, things to define. You can see these are lighter areas around the edges where we have darker edges down here. And so if we open up this folder, you can see some of the different elements that go into that bone. So we've got this uh, color here with a dirt map with levels on it and a mask uh, being created there. We've got base color here. And so you can see all of the, kind of the elements that go into that. Now let's say we want to keep this material, but we don't obviously want it to be on every part of the, uh, the body. And so this is where our masks come in again. Anything you've got here, as far as a fill layer, a material, anything, you can mask that off. So let's close this folder and we'll select the folder top and we'll add a black mask. And you can see that whole thing goes away. So because it's being masked out, let's go ahead. And now instead of masking this out individually, we're going to turn on symmetry up here at the top. And so this will allow us to create our mask symmetrically. All right. So you can see here, there's kind of a red line. You can kind of see on the back there. And if I come up to the top, you can kind of see the cursors on both sides. And so what we want to do now is mask these areas off where we want the bone. And you can see when we're painting a mask, it's either black or white or somewhere in between. And so let's go ahead. It's a black mask now. So we want to paint white. So we'll go to white, but the flow you can see is driven. We've got it driven by pen pressure. And so we can come in here. And now when I paint, I can actually paint through. And wherever I paint that white, that's where that bone is going to come and show through. And so I can come in here and it's uh, basically wherever we, we kind of reduce that scale kind of a texture. And so we can come in here and kind of define this We're painting in where we want this to go and go all the way to the edges there. So you can see that reflected there in the 2D view. And we can kind of come in here and maybe use a little less pressure we come down here to kind of blend things together a little bit. Okay. Kind of like that. And let's play with our brush size a little bit so we can get in under the, the bottom there, kind of remove some of those scales from the bottom. And right now we're getting a pretty clean line, uh, but we can fix that. We also probably want to get rid of the scales on the back here. You can see where we have supposedly our, our wings have been cut off. And so we can come in and get rid of, the scales there. So we've got something like that. All right. And then any other places like down here on the elbows, we might have areas where, you know, we want to have a little bit of the, the bony structure kind of showing through. We can kind of put that in there. Okay. So something like that. Now, as I said, we could break up that line and you can see it's happening on the other side as well. We can break up those edges by changing our brush. So if you go choose a brush here, we can choose a different kind of brush. So let's choose maybe this dirt one brush and we'll just go ahead and double click on it. And now you can see the end of our brush is basically this dirt kind of texture. And so we can come in now and still using the same color and we can dial down our size a little bit. We can come in and we can start to break up the area of transition between the bone and the scales. And so anywhere where you're kind of, transitioning between different kinds of materials with a mask or uh, with something like a texture, you can always kind of use your brush and the end of your brush to kind of break up that area of transition. And so we could come in here, start to break up that kind of area. We could come in along the elbow and sort of say that that kind of transitions down into the 
the elbow here and kind of break that up a little bit. Just make it look a little bit more natural. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. This is bone as it comes up in here. And you can also go back in and modify the mask that is uh, masking off the, the scales. And so for instance, come in here and let's say it's going to be this one. We'll come into this mask and you can see as we click on that, it's not masking it. And so we can come in here on the bump part that's really kind of stands out, come into black, and then we can start to dial out that bump a little bit as it kind of comes into the bony area, just so it's not as like sudden of a transition there. Okay, kind of work that back in. And so a lot of it is going to be just blending these things together. You can see we can come in here and kind of dial that bumpiness of the cell procedural down a little bit as it's up in here so it's not quite as drastic. And even just doing that a little bit across the surface, I think will help in terms of making it look a little bit more realistic. It's not kind of the same all around. Okay. You could also come in here, like if you didn't want a kind of a straight line there, we could increase our brush size and do a little bit more of a rough kind of transition with the bumpiness kind of coming into the side of the finger, that sort of thing sides of the fingers down here, side of the thumb, all the way back up. All right, something like that. So once you've got that texture created and kind of blended in with the bone, the next thing that we're gonna do is actually work on the jumpsuits. For the jumpsuit, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's not as organic. We want something with a little bit more of a structured pattern and we also want the effect of a different kind of material. So something like a, a velvet or velour kind of a look, which we can get that look in Maya with some Arnold shaders, but we want to get the texture uh, down the way that we want it here on our jumpsuit. So we'll do that next.